We want to welcome all of his glory nation from east to west to north to south as we bring you the Gospel of John. Here Jesus is going to appear to his disciples uh, the, the last time. Um, and uh, this is uh, going to wrap up the, the Gospel of John and our study. We're going to go into another Gospel after this. I'm not sure what we'll go into, either Matthew or uh, probably Matthew. Um, do that again um, for uh, His Glory Nation. So this is the Gospel of John 21 wrapping up. <clears throat> and as we always do, we pray that the Holy Spirit will come down from east to west to north to south to be the true teacher in the living Word of God, which is our Savior, Christ the Lord. Okay, this, uh, let's get into the word. After these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples of the Sea of Tiberias, and in the way he showed himself. So this is the Christ going to show himself to the, uh, to the disciples as they're out on the, the Sea of Di uh, Tiberias. Sea of Di Tiberias is another name for the Sea of Galilee. So he is in going to be in a section where there's actually a church, and I think it's called uh, St. Peter's Church, uh, when I was in Israel, we actually uh, did a prayer session right there where you could look at the Sea of Galilee and just think of and, and, and have the feeling that this, this is where Christ stood, where the, the disciples came to him and he cooked them breakfast. This is absolutely amazing uh, that the, the Bible is just so vivid when you go to, uh, go to Israel. Uh, verse 2, Simon Peter, Thomas called the twin, Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, those means the sons of thunder, that is the, the two twins, and the two others of his disciples were together. Simon Peter said to him, I'm going fishing. They said to him, we are going uh, with you also. They went out immediately and got in the boat at night and they caught nothing. Uh, we've mentioned in our other studies of the gospel, it is so true that they go out in the middle of the night to, sh to uh, fish. And uh, that's the only time the fish come out. We were at a banquet um, at uh, on the sea when we stayed in the Sea of Galilee, and I'd go out there and have my coffee first thing in the morning, and I'd look at the beautiful Sea of Galilee and just you know just looking at the sea that the Lord, uh, the, the, where He was, and He walked on water and all the Bible coming alive, and I'd, I'd have my morning coffee as the sun come up, and I could never see any fish. They were just there were none to be had. And uh, the, at night we had a banquet, and at the banquet they had some lights that were showing. Uh, shining onto the Sea of Galilee. And there were fish after fish after fish. And I mean, some huge fish. And that's exactly the way it is. In the day, you don't see them, but at night, that's when they go out and fish. Uh, that's why when you look in during the day, you don't see any. We went on a, uh, a, 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 I would say a cruise, but the same type of boat that Jesus would take, similar to that, and uh, to go across the Sea of Galilee. And they showed us how they used the fisher nets and threw him down the way Jesus and his disciples would have done back in the, in the day. And they never would catch anything because it's in the middle of the day. They want you to be able to see it. But at night, things change. That's where they fish. But this night is different. The Lord is going to show them something that they didn't catch anything. And that's pretty rare not to catch anything uh, when you go out fishing at night on the Sea of Galilee. So God had a purpose. Jesus had a purpose behind this. Then Jesus, uh, but when they came in the morning, it had now come. Jesus stood on the shore, yet the disciples did not know that this was Jesus. <laughs> they didn't recognize him. From the distance on the shore, you can't tell who it is. And it was Jesus welcoming them in. Then Jesus said to them, Children, have you any food? They answered, No. And he said to them, Cast the net on the right of the boat, and you'll find some. So they cast it now, and they were able to draw in because of a multitude of fish. So when they're coming in in the morning, and they didn't catch anything at night. The last thing they're going to think they're going to catch fish is when the sun comes up because the, the, the uh, fish go to the, the darker waters, the deeper waters, the coolness of the waters, and to, to uh, protect themselves. So this was truly a fate to throw it down, and this is exactly what happens. Therefore, the disciples who Jesus loved said to Peter, that would be John. John always talks in the third person in, in this uh, uh, um this gospel. He cast his net on the right side of the boat and you find some. So they cast and now they were able to draw on him because there was multiple fish. Uh, it is the Lord. Now when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, Kairos, he put his outer garment for he had removed it and plunged into the sea. He wanted to get to the Lord uh, as soon as you possibly can. <clears throat> that would be like us. If we're in a boat and we see Jesus Christ on the sea, I don't care what I got on me. I'm getting it off and I'm going to the Lord as soon as I possibly can. And that's the heart of Peter. Peter has changed because he knows the risen Christ is who he said he was. He is the Messiah. He is the King. He is the Son of God. Peter has changed. Remember, he denied him three times. 
when the shepherd was struck, the, the, the sheep would scatter, exactly what the Old Testament said. And he would deny him three times before the rooster crowed, two times. And this is God, through Jesus Christ, going to show Peter that he has given him redemption and what he is to do. But the other disciples came to the little boat, for they were not far from the land, but the 200 cubits dragging them out with the fish. Then as soon as they had come to the land, they saw a fire of coal, uh, of coals there, and the fish laid on it, and bread. And Jesus said, Bring some of the fish which you have just caught. And Simon Peter went up and dragged the net full of large fish, 153, although there were so many the net was not broken. So why does the Holy Spirit tell us 153? And that's a, a question I get asked a lot. Does it mean anything? Yes, it does, because everything in Scripture means something. The Holy Spirit wouldn't put 153 in there for nothing. Do we know all the totality of what 153 means? No, it's probably a lot deeper than what we're probably about to what we're about to say, because God's word is deeper, and the more you go back and more you peel it back, the deeper, deeper, deeper. But Saint Jerome has given us uh, in his his uh, commentaries that the 153 is broken down like this: the hundred is represents the Gentiles, because in the the uh, the the miracles of the fish and the bread the Gentiles were broken down in groups of 100. And 50 represents the Jewish faithful. And so the Jewish were, were set down in groups of 50. Remember, there were two different uh, scenarios. Uh, one was uh, given 5,000, the other one uh, 4,000. Uh, 4, so the one was to a Jewish audience, the first one, and which was barley bread. That's why they tell us barley. Barley is the first harvest so the harvest was for the jews the first time and then jesus opened up his ministry to the gentile so the 100 represent or the 50 represents the jewish because they were in groups of 50 and the 100 represents the gentiles because they're uh, uh, they were set down in groups of 100 to feed them so that's also showing you the dual covenant that the lord most high through his son jesus christ is fulfilling a dual covenant to the jews and the church the gentile mutually exclusive but through one messiah and that's the purpose of the book of Revelation in the end times, the, 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 uh, after the two witnesses and the 144,000 of, of the 12,000 of each of the 12 tribes of Israel uh, will be the Jewish faithful, will know that the Messiah is Jesus Christ. So the dual, dual covenant that he has with him. And three is the number of the Trinity. And we're going to see how this three is used, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, how Jesus is going to ask Simon Peter three times. Why is he going to ask him three times, do you love me? Because he denied him three times, but also it goes deeper. He wants his denial. When you deny the, the, the Son, you're also denying the Father and the Holy Spirit. And he said, as Jesus said out of his own mouth, anyone who denies the Son also denies the Father. Anyone who does not know me does not know the Father. So this is a denial that you deny the Son, you're denying all three parts of the Trinity. That's why Jesus is going to ask him three times, do you love me? So for redemption of the three times that he said, I do not know you. Jesus said, bring on the fish and you caught 153. Jesus said to them, come and eat breakfast. Yet none of the disciples dared ask him, who are you? Knowing that it was Kairos. Jesus then came and took a bread and gave it to him and likewise the fish. Now this is the third time Jesus showed himself to the disciples after he was raised from the dead. <coughs> Again, no coincidence, the third time he showed himself. Three is the representative of the Trinity. And uh, what is very fascinating, again, about three, all through Scripture, three, even in Judaism, which they have not, according to the rabbis, not seen the Messiah yet. They believe the Messiah has not come yet. They missed the first coming of Jesus Christ. Three in Judaism means the completion of God's Trinity. The completion of God's spirit is, is what three means in, in Judaism. Again, three, it's always three. Elohim, the word of God in the, in the Torah, literally means three. It can't mean two, can't mean four, it means three. Their own name of God is Elohim, meaning three. And Jesus shows us also in the, um, in the wedding of, uh, festival of Cana. The scripture tells us uh, on the third day they were married. Uh, in the wedding of a ceremony in Cana. Why do they say the third day? The third day is the day that the Jewish people always get married in Jewish tradition. And the third day is a Tuesday because they don't have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Sunday is the first day of the week. That would be day one. Monday is day two. And, and uh, Tuesday is day three. So they get married on the third day. And Jesus tells us in the wedding ceremony in Cana on the third day. 
meaning the Trinity, the completion of God's Spirit, and also signifying that the Christ, the bridegroom, is going to marry his church. So this wedding ceremony in Canaan is much deeper than just a ceremony that he was at. Why do the Jews do that? One again is three is the number of the completion of God's Spirit, but it goes back to the Torah. On the third day in the Torah, in the book of Genesis, God said it was good twice. God said it was good twice. It's the only time that God said it was good twice. It's the only day. So that's why they picked the third day for weddings. And that will be good. Out of two witnesses, my word is established, the Father and the Son, that Jesus Christ will unite with his bride on the third day and completion. Three is the completion of the Trinity. Praise his name. Everything is so detailed in the word of the Lord. So when they had eaten breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me more than these? So this is his first test. Do you love me more than these? He said, yes, Kairos, you know that I love you. He said to them, feed my lambs. So this is what he's telling Peter and the disciples that they need to do. Feed my people. Go and bring in the harvest. Go from east to west to north to south. Preach the gospel of the risen Christ because you've seen and tell them there is, there is, there is, I am the way, the truth, and the life, the gospel of, of, of Jesus Christ. And he said a second time, so the second time he's asking him, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? He said, yes, Lord, yes, Kairos, you know I love you. He said, to tend to my sheep, take care of my sheep, feed my sheep. How do we feed the sheep? The word of God. How do we tend to, to the sheep? We, we, we raise them up in prayer. We love them as we love, uh, uh, as Jesus says, love your, love your neighbor as you love yourself. We bring everyone up in love. Intercession prayer. And he said to him a third time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? Peter was grieved because he said to him the third time. He was grieved because he realized why he was doing this. Because of the three rejections of the rejection of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And Jesus went through this so that he's ready to go out and do what God had in, in store to do through the Son. Do you love me? And he said, Kairos, you know all things. You know all things. You're God. You're the Son of God, and you are the God of the second head. You know the beginning and the end. You are the creator of all things, and you know my heart. That's the most important thing. I have re redeemed my heart because I love you with all my heart, my soul, and mind. Peter was a changed man. He went from living in the secular world to being a spiritual leader in the name of the Most High God through His Son, Jesus Christ. You know that I love you. Jesus said to them, feed my sheep. Go out and feed them. Go out and feed the word of the Lord. Give them the bread of life. Give them the living water. Verse 18, most assuredly, I say to you, when you were younger, you girded yourself and walked where you wished. But when you were old, you stretched out your hands and another will gird you and carry you where you, don't, you do not wish. So when you're young, you can go wherever you want. <coughs> but now you know me. I have a purpose for you and it's going to, you're going to go because of your love for me and what I told you to do. You're going to finish the race of your life going out and feeding my sheep, tending to my sheep, and going to persecution in my name's sake to bring in my lost sheep. That is your role. And you will do it for my glory and my purpose. Then he spoke uh, signifying by what death he would glorify Theos, the God of three. And we hadn't spoken this. He said to him, follow me. So meaning that Peter would go down and, and, and his death will, was by the Romans, by Nero. And he was uh, crucified. He, but he didn't believe that he could be crucified in the same way of the Lord. He wasn't worthy. So he was crucified upside down. So he did exactly the way of the Lord. And he went and preached the gospel. Peter finished the race. And Peter uh, is, a, is an inspiration to us that we get it wrong in our sinful way. But if we trust in the Lord, he's a loving, redeeming God through his son. And he will give us the way, the truth, and the life. And we trust in him in all things. Then Peter, turning around, saw the disciples who Jesus loved following, <coughs> meaning John, we all, who also leaned on his breast at the supper, and the Lord, who is the one who betrays you. Peter, seeing this, said to Jesus, but Kairos, what about this man? So Peter's still a little bit of Peter in him. He's, we never get rid of our, our DNA, who we are, foot and mouth. You know, Even though the Lord says, focus on this, finish the race, He's like, well, what about John? What's John going to do? If I'm going to go and be girded and go, this, what about John? Don't worry about John. You focus on what I have you to do, and John will focus on what he has you to do. 
And that's the way the Lord's telling us to. Don't worry about Mary. Don't worry about Jimmy. Don't worry about Bobby Sue. God has given his will to each and every person. Finish the race with God has you for you to do. And don't worry about somebody else. God has a plan for each and every one of them. Build them up in intercession. Jesus said to them, if, 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 if I will, that it will remain till, to come. What is it to you? Follow me. So that means if it's my will that he, that John will still be alive when I come, what's it matter to you? You're going home anyway. Whether you die in the flesh, your soul and spirit will live on. <clears throat> so the, the rumor went around that John is never going to see death. And there's a little deeper message to this because he did see the second coming of Christ before he died. Because God, through Jesus Christ, allowed him to be transported up to, in the book of Revelation, to see the end days, to see the coming of the Messiah before he literally died. So this is literally fulfilled. Then this saying went out among the brethren that the disciples would not, the disciple would not die. Yet Jesus did not say to him that he would not die, but if it will remain till he come, what is it to you? So Jesus says he never will die. So the, that's what he means. He, he, he did die. Um, the, the, most uh, scholars will tell you that uh, John died of a natural death. There's some that say he was boiled, and, and, but there's no evidence. But it, it looks to be that John was the only of the disciples that didn't die in a martyred way as the others did. But the point is, J Jesus did show him the kingdom glory and the second coming in the book of Revelation that he saw on the island of Patmos before the Lord took him to be with him. Now, John is in, in heaven with the Lord today, anxiously awaiting for the return of the Messiah the second time, which he's already seen, and Jesus will fulfill that. This is the disciple who testifies of these things and wrote these things, meaning I, John, testify, and I wrote these things. I saw them with my own eyes. Nobody can dispute it. I am an eyewitness to all these. We know that the testimony is true. There's no doubt this is true. I, John, have verified this. And we close out in the last chapter and the last verse of our teaching of the Gospel of John. And there were also many other things that Jesus did, which if they were written one by one, I suppose that even the world itself could not contain the books that would be written. So he's saying, I'm only giving you what was God inspired for the Lord to tell me to put in this book, the book of John. I will t I'll give you 1 John, 2 John, 3 John, and the book of Revelation later. But Jesus did much, much more than this. And this is a testimony that the Christ is the living Christ. He is not only the Son of God, and he was resurrected according to the Scripture, and he died according to the Scripture and fulfilled over 30 different uh, Bible prophecies of the Old Testament to the letter. As Jesus says in Matthew 5, 17, 18, I didn't come to replace the law and the prophets. I came to complete it, fulfill it to every yacht and tittle, the smallest blemish, dotting the I, crossing the T, Jesus Christ did what he said he was going to do, and he will do what he says he's going to do the second time because we have the gospel of John. John saw it in the book of Revelation. We pray that this gospel teaching has been a blessing to you, and may the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and John bless you today and always. God bless you.